We turn now to our New Testament reading. This is our our final parable in this past month's series of stories Jesus told. And this parable about the wise and foolish builder is the the conclusion of Jesus' Sermon in the Mount found in Matthew 5 through 7. So we turn to chapter 7, beginning at verse 24. Listen for God's word to us this day. Everyone then who hears these words of mine, that would be the Sermon on the Mount, and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell. And great was its fall. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? And now, O Lord, grant that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts might be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In preparing for today's sermon, I did a little research on the internet to learn about different kinds of foundations for houses. According to bobvila.com, the most common foundation is a poured concrete foundation. It's placed on a bed of crushed gravel to help with drainage. If you live in an area where where the ground freezes in the winter, then you need a frost-protected foundation. In colder environments, concrete footings extend below the frost line and provide extra support for a concrete slab foundation. You can also use insulated concrete. Then there are permanent wood foundations developed in the 1960s. They use treated plywood and lumber as an alternative material for crawl spaces. According to homeguides.com, over 300,000 houses in the United States are built on permanent wood foundations. Finally, there are raised foundations. These are necessary in areas that are prone to flooding. Raised foundations are supported either by pier and beam systems or stem walls that raise the home above the flood line. Pier and beam is also pretty uh, common in areas where there's a lot of clay. I'm pretty sure that's what my own home is built on. The type of foundation of a home depends on the kind of soil that the home is built upon. And soil is composed of, of three basic ingredients, clay, sand, and silt. Now in Charlotte, we've got a whole lot of clay in our soil, and clay can present challenges for foundations because it changes depending on moisture. When clay dries out, it shrinks, which causes foundation problems. Of course, with all the afternoon rains we've been getting, that's not much of a challenge these days, but too much moisture can also cause trouble because it causes clay to expand and soften, and that can create trouble as well. Now, nothing reveals foundation problems quite like a storm with its rains and floods and winds. Storms expose the weaknesses of the structures we build. When a great deal of water comes at once, watch out. Look what happens along the coastline when hurricanes come. In a row of houses, some will make it through the storm, others will not. Sometimes that's just luck, but most of the time, it's about the house's foundation. Storms come in many forms in our lives. Sometimes they are personal, a health crisis, the loss of a job, the death of a loved one, a divorce. These events rock our respective worlds, and they test our lives foundations. Sometimes storms strike more broadly. COVID-19 has been a terrible storm 
that has hit our world. And like a strong storm, it's exposing the weakness of our society's foundations. Cracks that have been there quite some time are becoming crevices that too many people are falling through. Inequities present for generations are being exposed for all of us to see. Access to testing and getting timely results is very different for people across the economic spectrum. The wealthy, well, they get their results in a matter of days or even hours, I hear, if you're a pro athlete, but the poor wait weeks. Public schools will be virtual in the fall, while most private schools will not. So roughly 12% of American children will continue to advance in their learning at a faster pace, while 88% will struggle from home. Working class Americans are facing depression-like circumstances given record unemployment rates, but the stock market, it just keeps going up. And so the economic divides that define our society continue to expand. Some political leaders prey on these divides, believing the strategy will help them gain power or keep it. How long can we hold together amid this storm? Our world is built upon shaky foundations, the foundations of profit and power. And when a pandemic hits, It threatens profits and exposes the limits of human power. So, like a house built on sand, the rain of new cases keeps pouring down, the flood of hospital emergency rooms continues, and the winds of recession build. And our house shudders. Storms have a way of exposing the truth that this world is in fact built on sand. Our world is finite. It does not endure forever. The world is in fact passing away. Profits come and go, stock markets wax and wane. Power changes hands, empires rise and fall. Death ultimately comes to us all and we cannot take any of this with us. Nothing in this world endures forever. So when we build our households on the foundations of this world's values, with the foolish man, we build on sand. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus proposes an alternative foundation. A life, indeed a world, built not on the sand of profit and power, but on the solid rock that is the kingdom of God, which endures forever. This parable represents the conclusion of the Sermon on the Mount. Throughout the sermon in Matthew chapters 5 through 7, Jesus describes the the foundational principles of the world. His life embodies the kingdom of God. The foundation is poured on the bedrock of the Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. These blessings, well, they they make no sense in the world as we know it, the world built on the foundations of profit and power. 
In this world, the poor are not blessed. The rich are blessed, aren't they? Because our world is built on profit. In this world, those who mourn are not blessed. They are a downer. They are a threat to the mindless mantra of don't worry, be happy optimism. In this world, the meek are not blessed. They are squashed by the powerful who rule everything. In this world, the innocent, the the pure in heart, well, they're duped by the powers that be again and again. This world thinks that peace can be achieved through violence, so peace is something that is kept. It is not made. This world does not comprehend making peace that is rooted in justice and righteousness. But according to Jesus, like sand in the midst of a storm, this world, as we know it, is passing away. In God's tomorrow, which is to say in the eternity that exists beyond this space and time, the poor, those who mourn, the meek, the merciful, the pure in heart, the peacemakers, well, they embody blessing. After pouring the footings of the beloved community's foundations, Jesus goes on to lay out the peer and beam system that supports God's heavenly vision. Anger and revenge threaten the foundation. So Jesus says, you have heard it said, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist an evildoer. If anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other also. In fact, Jesus goes as far as saying, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Not so you can win them over, but so that you may be children of God. Generosity is essential to the heavenly foundation. So Jesus tells his disciples, give to everyone who begs from you and do not refuse anyone who wants to borrow from you. Self-righteousness and false piety weaken the foundation. So in Matthew 6, Jesus warns his disciples against public displays displays of faith in almsgiving and, and public prayers that are more about being seen by others than communing with God. Anxiety undermines the foundation like poorly packed fill soil. And so Jesus says, do not worry about anything. Saying, what will we eat or what will we drink or what will we wear? Your heavenly Father knows you need all these things. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Greed erodes the foundation. And so Jesus says, do not store up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consume and where thieves do not break in and steal for where your treasure is, There, your heart will be also. He goes on to say, No one can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. One is a bedrock, the other, sand. Love. Mercy, grace, justice, righteousness, peace, generosity, humility, faith. These are the elements that come together to form the bedrock that is the foundation of the kingdom of God, the beloved community, God's vision for the world's tomorrow, the reality of eternity beyond this space and time. Beloved, this foundation can withstand any storm, for it endures through all time. 
no amount of rain, no 500-year flood, no hurricane force winds, no lack of money or resources, no sense of powerlessness, not even an empire's cross can bring down a house built on this eternal foundation. In the words of the old hymn, on Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. Amen.